Hey, what's up, everybody? Time for another social study, psychology, sexy time in Japan video, just because I'm going to show you a comment about Japan. So I may, I may as well talk about it, right? Um, remember, if you like the videos, like, sub, silly, comment, share, support the channel if you want. Appreciate it. Thanks. Kind of a follow up to that last video I did. And it was talking about how you got to be your own hero, right? You have to be the best version of yourself, right? You got to look in the mirror, right? And I bring this up because a couple of things. So one, um, and again, so that recent thing with that Tempest thing, I was sent that and there was a comment about, uh, have you seen the Strive orgy? No, I have not seen the Strive orgy. I didn't even know about the Tempest thing until it got sent to me. So again, a lot of these things, I have no idea um, unless they get sent to me. And just like this picture of this guy right here, who his name is apparently Jordan, let's just say Kukuju or whatever. This apparently is the polar bear guy. And uh, I was sent this because other people have sent me messages of this guy messaging them, talking about how evil I am, how I hate transgender people. I want people, I, I want to kill people, apparently. And you should not mention me in any form, video game wise, because it's not fair that I've beaten people in video games because I've used different names online and you should not talk about that. This polar bear guy is a real looker. I, I can tell why this is the same guy that, well, of course, not only are people messaging me that he's messaging them and showing them the messages. This is the same guy that will fucking, and I've seen it in discord joke about me dying. He goes on my own YouTube jokes about me dying, wishes death on me. He's a fucking psychopath says everything that I've done is fake while messaging other people, warning them not to ever talk about me. Wow. I mean, he's quite masculine. You can see he's got a little bit of hair there, more masculine than me. He's a fan of the raw super, I'm sure. An inside job, right? Every dog will have its day. I digress. Jimmy Kukuju. Jordan Cook, what's his name? I already forgot his name. You know, this is a long forward. This is a long forward. I, I apologize. But did you know that I actually generally, I have no idea how a lot of my haters look, right? Um, You know, I had called the police on somebody before I went to Japan. But I also, did you know, I don't even know. So a while ago, I had to call the authorities about somebody. And I don't even know who the person was, but I was made aware that I don't have to worry about it. And I was like, well, God, who is this person that's been stalking me, you know, basically. And strangely, I don't know if there's certain rules. They actually couldn't even tell me. They said because it's like a criminal matter, I guess. So maybe they fucked with some other people, too. I don't know. But um, I mean, it just goes to show I had no idea that this is what the polar bear guy looks like. But I am not surprised. <laughs> Let's just say he could definitely work on himself instead of uh, having a mental illness. You know, this is what I talk about that last video of people didn't get, right? You know, have you ever seen those memes about uh, shows like a LGBTQ person? And they're talking about, so have you actually ever been harassed in real life? Have you ever seen that meme and it ends with the fucking, uh, the curb your enthusiasm thing? She's like, oh yeah, the government's harassing me, blah, blah, blah. I feel the hate from them, they're so evil. And they're like, well, what have they actually done to you? Where is this actual hate? And the girl's eventually like, well... Actually, the, the hate's just from me, and I, and it just like the guys like, like professional fucking victims, dude. I, I'm serious. It's crazy. And also, because I want to show this, if you saw on Reddit recently, oh my god, I guess sometimes people post my stuff on Reddit, and there's this crazy guy talking about how every video I'm a huge narcissist. Apparently, I'm always talking about that I'm better than everyone else. Every single video, and he guarantees it, I talk about how big and long my dick is. I'm like, what is this guy even talking about? And of course, he refused to show proof of any of it. And the only video he could find of me actually talking about my dick was a video from eight months ago when I was in Japan talking about a sex story, which we can talk about that as well. But because I think that's kind of relevant, actually, in terms of, you know, you got to get out, dude. It's no wonder that people look like this Jordan kukaju person right like all you guys do like haters seemingly is post on the internet like parasocial sort of behavior like what are you doing to actually be the best version of yourself 
oh, Clayton's this huge narcissist, narcissist, uh, but he's always talking about how he's better than everyone else. I constantly say that I feel lucky that I've been able to do what I've done in games, right? I'm surprised that I've been able to win. Now, me stating a fact doesn't mean I'm a narcissist, right? I've constantly said how insecure I am, right? You know, me stating the fact that I've done more than anyone else in the fighting game community, tech-wise and all this kind of shit, 2024, still doing more shit, right? That's a fact. That's not narcissism. Is truth the trigger word for you? Like, you could spend some of this time, instead of posting about me randomly on Reddit, making a fake delusion in your head, like Jimmy Jordan Kukaju, waste his time on Discord messaging random people, people showing me the messages, I don't know if he was trying to hit on this guy. I guess he's going to a gay pride parade. Guess what? Believe it or not, not every gay person hates me. Sometimes I'm surprised myself. Sometimes I'm surprised. You're gay. You don't hate me. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes I'm surprised as well. <laughs> At this point, I can be pretty surprised, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, in, instead of, you know, hating on other people, what are you doing to be the best per version of yourself? You know, instead of focusing on all these stories of, I guess me telling a fact is 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 narcissism, right? I, I've done more than other people in video games. That's a fact. I've said that I feel lucky to do it. I've said that I don't consider myself good. I would not expect to win all these tournaments or something if I played again, right? doesn't change the fact that I've done more than other people. And the community has had to lie about it. All these professional victims, right? Transjack can't be those LGBTQ posts about fucking... Um, God, talking about, oh, how it just shows how much the LGBTQ loves everybody. And uh, like, what the fuck are you talking about? How they the LGBTQ helps not only themselves, they help other groups while they joke about me dying. Okay, dude. And you know, the, the, the Tempest thing, like I said, what I was getting at there is a lot of these insecurities from people come from yourself, right? Now you could say for me, you got to say, let's let's think about my situation. I do want to talk about the Japan thing. Because I think it's, I just like talking about Japan sometimes. Unlike a lot of you guys who have only played video games your entire life, right? It's important to get out of your comfort zone, do new things, travel, you know, get a broader perspective on life, right? But, um, you know, the Tempest thing, what I was talking about, what stuck out to me is, and a guy was talking about, oh, well, it's normalizing hookup behavior. And again, I don't know anything about the orgy thing. I guess you would have to show it to me. From a certain standpoint, I don't think it's weird that people would use Discord to try to hook up and have an orgy. Now, I'm not, you know, not my thing. Well, maybe if there's some hot girls, maybe. But <laughs> the idea of going to a Strive gate orgy <laughs> is not my thing. But, you know, it's... The internet is only becoming more and more widespread. I don't I don't think that's that weird that people in the video game community would want to have sex with each other. I mean, just that's how, you know, people don't even go outside half the time anymore. You know, ridiculous. So that's not weird to me. But the Tempest thing for me was I was basically saying, dude, if just that person changing their name made you want to fuck them, because I've seen the picture. Guess what? It still looks like a fucking man. You're just gay. And you don't need to be insecure about being gay. It's not a big deal. I've told the story before about the gay guy that lived with me. Joel, very fucking gay. Matt, not gay. <laughs> but likes to talk about having sex with men. Okay, not gay. <laughs> right? But that was on him, right? Now, I guess, you know, who knows? Maybe it's going to come out that Matt never actually had sex with guys. I don't know. But... You know, I, I'm, I don't care to confirm this, <laughs> you know, that, that far doesn't interest me. Right. But my point was that was on him. No one cared that he's gay. You're in this strive LGBTQ overly radical community. Nobody cares that you're fucking gay. Now, I guess maybe that Tempest guy, who knows? Is it even a guy? I don't know. But seriously, just this person saying, oh, it's my first tournament where I ever am going to say I'm a girl. And he just couldn't resist himself. Oh, my God. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bro, Just it's okay to be gay. Nothing changed. <laughs> I don't think anything changed, bro. And like I said, not and 
I say for the LGBTQ community as well, that, you know, you're not going to be Bridget, right? I don't see many transgender people if we believe this fucking retcon in the first place. Most transgender people don't look like Bridget, okay? Let's say, you know, I don't jack off to anime or hentai anymore, you know. I do jack off to ASMR sometimes, though. I am, I, I admit it, I'm not above jacking off to to ASMR sometimes. <laughs> but generally speaking, my nuts are saved for real people, okay? But, you know, assuming I was younger and I just saw an image of Bridget, you know, some of the fan art, I mean, it looks feminine. But what are you dudes even, you dudes, <laughs> you dudes, what are you they's even doing? Where the fuck you want to identify to actually look like this. You gotta remember, I grew up very unpopular, right? Beat up at the bus stop every day. Girls telling me I'm ugly, right? I've seen how fucking, you know, petty the world is. And then I became quotation marks cool. And all of a sudden, girls like me. I've seen how petty it is, right? Looks are very important, right? You know, sadly depending on your perspective, it is sad. And I've also seen that when I've had very per bad periods of health, I can tell you a lot of those same girls, they don't fucking care because now I'm sick and it's not cool, right? I mean, that's just the way the world is, right? Looks are important. Jimmy, Jordan, Choo Choo Choo, what are you doing to make yourself a better person, right? You know, I've devoted myself to being the most healthy person I could be. I didn't want to die a sick person. So I made my most, you know, biggest goal in life, my main hobby in life, if you could even call it a hobby, lifestyle, is being healthy. You motherfuckers, you just change your your gender and you get a gold star. It's, it's fucking disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's like a professional victim. And it's also like you're, you're treated like children, you know. The fighting game community, these overly rat, I guess, just the fighting game communities are just a bunch of fucking man babies. And people will say, oh, Clayton, you're, you're a man, baby. Uh, also, well, let's ignore that Clayton is still on disability, right? Has gone through life or death things. I wake up in pain every fucking day. This motherfucker was talking about, oh, you talk about your dick and you have an OnlyFans. And every single video, I have proof. Oh, well, actually, I could only find one video from eight months ago. You're a huge narcissist, faggot, blah, blah, blah. Probably jacking off to my pictures, you fucking weirdo. At least if you're going to be infatuated with me, sign up for the OnlyFans, right? You know, like, what are you doing to actually be this ideal? But you're treated like a child that you just dress up as something. So, oh, hey, the five-year-old dressed up. So that's what you are today. You're a cowboy. You're a helicopter. You know what I mean? It's fucking ridiculous. You're an adult. Have some responsibility, some accountability for your fucking actions, you fucking freak. And yes, I said freak. Fucking disgusting Jimmy Choo Choo train over here. He's, he's got some chest hair though, right? You know, but the point is, you can be transgender and attractive. I've said it before. You can be transgender if you're legitimately it, but I have no fucking respect for these people that just pretend to be all this stuff for fucking clout, right? And the Japan thing though, I do want to talk about that just because I think that's interesting because it shows that this guy, he's mad that uh, girls like me. There's also lots of girls that don't like me that automatically think, oh, I'm a huge douchebag that I must have sex with every single girl, right? Also, I'm sure this dude, he didn't want to talk about that. I've had times talking about my dick where I didn't even know if I'd ever be able to even masturbate again. That's how sick I've been. Have you ever been sick enough that you're lying in a hospital or you get out of the hospital and you're lying down and you're like, you are so, you don't even know what it's like to be dying. Those thoughts of like, oh my God, I don't even know if I'll ever be able to even masturbate again. Motherfucker talking about this fucking nonsense here but the japan thing is yeah people have asked me about girl stuff and all traveling and all this kind of stuff and the psychology of japan and sex is interesting to me so yes i have a video about having sex in real life i don't know if you have ever had sex in real life because all you do is talk about video games right I mean, you know, I've also said, and I had some people laugh about it. Yeah, I had sex with an escort once. I just thought I should finally try it. 
You know, Japan is very interesting. You know, like I said, the sex stuff in Japan is interesting. Like I said, I think it was the fifth time I was in Japan. And, you know, every time I'm like, oh, man, Clayton, you should try, you know, an escort in Japan. You know, it, it's so fucking good. And, you know, sex is so normalized in Japan, too. Like I said, I've even been, I think I had the story. Maybe it was on Instagram or something, but sitting down at the park, girl saw me, you know, she just came over, we started talking. Her English was actually, you know, very good. And, you know, sex in Japan is, you know, it, it's crazy when you talk to people, especially if you can speak a little bit of Japanese and, you know, she was even like, oh, yeah, I was thinking about being an escort when I was in middle school. I was like, oh, geez, are you serious? And that's like sex is so, you know, compared to an American, you know, mindset. Every time I go, to Japan, it's like, I'm like, really? In middle school? And it's just like seemingly like normal there. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like you hear crazy fucking sex stories in Japan, especially if you can speak the language. And, you know, her story was that she just thought she wasn't pretty enough to do it. But I'm like, don't you think that's weird? Like, and she's like, no, not really. It's Japan. And, you know, Japan has this weird kind of ether where, you know, it's almost like you go to the city to do stuff. And then when you're like in the suburbs, you have this sort of, what is it? Uh, the suburbs is like a very almost like it's like almost like something out of a movie. It's so peaceful, right? And then very very innocent. And then you go to the city, and it's like you talk to Japanese people, and you know it's like their one time in life that they get to have like any experience, almost like to like let loose and live free, and you know, definitely you have seen, and you talk about the escort thing, you know, I've seen some pretty, pretty young looking escorts that you would not, you know what I mean? And then, uh, that's not to say I was one with one that young, but, you know, I, I took a escort of age. Because <laughs> we were like, I'm like, they're like, Clayton, just try it. You've been here, you know, so many times. Why don't you just try it? And the story was, I tried it and it was so bad it almost makes me feel like I would have to try it again. Cause I'm like, I, I think, you know, my mindset was probably not the best going into it. You know, I was like, hey, I guess I have been to Japan like five times. I should try it just once. And, you know, I mean, I got a friend, he's a model and he's done stuff like that. Like it's just casual sex is so, especially if you speak the language is so casual in Japan. And, you know, I got it, you know, I'd have girls, oh, hey, take me to your house for the weekend, teach me English. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> we just met. Okay. Take me to your house for the weekend. We just we just met. You just want to stay for the weekend? Like, okay. <laughs> right? You know, and even when I've I've talked to some girls, God, I mean, one girl, she's like, Oh yeah, I just want you to know I have a boyfriend, but it's okay. Because even if he finds out, you're the cool American guy, basically. And he will forgive me because this is an experience I need to have at least once, right? Which is, it's crazy, right? Especially if you can speak a little bit of Japanese and they trust you and you get to like know a little bit of the psychology and everything like that. It's, it's pretty crazy there. God, I showed that mom and daughter on the train. Oh my God, I was surprised by that. I had to start recording. I'm like, is this actually happening? Like, what is going on, dude? But... You know, the escort thing, you know, and I talked about my penis just because it was just like, oh, man, I could barely even get like fully hard because it was just not sexual. And then you get like anxiety. You're like, oh, God, my dick. I, I can't even like get super hard. It's like it's so it was so forced. I, I could see how some people could do it because you're like super horny. And of course, when you're sick all the time, it kind of fucks with your sex drive anyway. But. I was not in the right mindset to do it. And that's what that video was about. And um, I don't think that was a narcissistic story whatsoever. You know, sorry that I've had sex. Yes, if it sounds lame that I had sex with an escort before. Okay, I did. I tried it. <laughs> it wasn't good. I didn't brag about how awesome it was. Although some people, like I said, I have, I have a model friend. He thinks it's awesome. He's told me actually some kind of funny stories about it before. One time he, uh, what he, he said something about like, uh, he didn't actually bring in all the money to do it with the girl. And then when he got there, she's like, basically like, well, you're hot. So I don't give a fuck anyway. Let's just, so cheaper than a date basically. But, um, 
you know, that again, that's a story. That's just me. I'm an honest person, blunt person, right? Me stating fact isn't narcissism. I think you who has just stayed at home all day, complained about video games, professional victim, oh, Clayton must be evil. You're the one that has a mental problem, right? How many times do I have to say I'm not cool, right? I have tons of girls that don't like me, right? I wish I was more cool. But that doesn't stop me from actually trying to be, quotation marks, cool. I try to be the best version of myself, right? I've had to try to overcome these adversities. I don't just stick a label on myself. Oh, I'm transgender now, blah, blah. I mean, the funny thing is people say I lie about my health. You know, the funny thing is, you know, when Buttmonger originally tried to start saying that I was faking cancer for attention and all this kind of stuff, where the fuck did I ever say that I had cancer in the first place, if you think about it? Never had to go fund me up, right? Nothing like that. And I was never one of those people that even when I was doing everything, I didn't say, oh, I have cancer, all this kind of stuff. Because I always said before, I didn't have to do, you know, chemo or anything like that. I just had radiation and I had stuff removed, right? And I actually said, is more so the radiation. I developed all these autoimmune diseases. That was that was the worst part, right? And of course, I got a scar and that kind of stuff and i still got a fucking tumor i still got one tumor left you know just don't want to stop growing so i'm just not even going to get that one removed although i do i'm supposed to begin that one checked on pretty soon just to make sure it hasn't been growing but you know I, i still got problems right cluster headaches most painful condition known to man some doctors what is your condition your condition is completely mental right but uh, yeah, that kind of makes me. I, I miss Japan. I like those kind. I wish. I wish my Japanese was better. Like especially, you know, I remember. God, I remember. It's right near the Lawson, right? You probably know what I'm talking about. If you've been to Japan, Japan is so fucking small. Japan is so fucking small, dude. If you ever go there, especially well, especially if you're talking about the Tokyo area, it's by the Lawson, by the hot dog guy. There's a lot the Lawson, and there's a lot of like escorts and all this kind of stuff. And I remember there's like a kind of suave Japanese guy. He's like. Kind of like, he's like, hey, what's going on? It's like, how much, you know, Japanese do you speak? Because I see you a lot, right? And just like I said, in that area, you know, just, well, God, actually, they even remember me and some of the, yeah, that was, that was nice, yeah. They even remember me and Inagi and all that kind of stuff. So not just there, but the more Tokyo area that you might see on YouTube. Guy came over, good-looking guy, right? Tell me stories about how he's been in and out of jail, right? You know, good-looking guy, though, right? But... You know, even me, me and him were talking about the sex stuff and everything like that. And I'm like, what do you think about all this? Because he had been to America before, too. We're like, kind of like comparing my broken Japanese, his broken English. Somehow it combined to us being able to have a conversation. And it Japan is really interesting with that sort of ether, that controlled ether, you know, of when you're in Shinjuku, when you're in a city... You are not held to the same standards that we are once we go back home. And, you know, even he's talking about, he's like, yeah, you could do this. You can do this here. But you got to remember, once we go home to, you know, the suburbs, wherever we live, now we can't do this. So the perspective is, and you got to remember, that's why, like, there's a lot of, like, cops there. The cops aren't even there to actually, like, arrest anybody. Never seen anybody arrested. I've heard of a story. No, I've heard of two stories ever of a person actually being legitimately arrested, right? I'm sure there's more, but I'm just talking about legitimately. And they really had to like kind of push their luck, luck it sounded like, but you know, and he was just like, well, you gotta understand, like, again, this is where we go to be free. Once we go to the suburbs, we have no life. You're like a robot, basically. He didn't say like a robot, but you know, we're talking, paraphrasing for you in English. You know, he's like, He's like, that's why you're allowed to do things here as long as you don't hurt anybody. And that's an interesting thing about Japan that I've talked about before is there's this idea of, you know, as long as you don't hurt anybody, you can kind of do whatever you want because Japanese people are generally not very malicious. A lot of people feel safe with each other. If the person feels safe with you, they'll do a lot of stuff, right? And that's why, you know, people are like, Clayton, the girl feels safe with you to go home. And like I said, I told that one story specifically. Dude, the dudes were actually basically wingman for me. And they're like, why are you asking if it's okay? 
they're like, you wouldn't hurt somebody, would you? And I was like, well, no. And they're like, then nobody cares. They're like, you know, we don't hurt people here. People don't hurt people. So it's like not even a thought that you would do something bad to somebody. If someone trusts you, it sounds weird, right? Kind of weird, right? You would think, you know, of course, even in America, you know, obviously. I have some American stories of girls <laughs> just meeting them right off the bat, right? But Japan, I don't know. I guess it's a little bit different because it just seems like you're in a a different world. And, you know, just how blunt it is in, from that perspective, I think, is pretty interesting. And um, like I said, the police are basically just there to make sure nobody gets hurt. But because nobody really hurts people, right? Although the sad part, if you watch those videos, is that... Um, you know, because nobody would care enough to hurt somebody, you do get that sense that nobody cares about you to really care about you. And as I've told that story before, it's with that girl, and she actually started crying when I asked how she was doing. And, you know, maybe she was just playing up for me, right? You know, but I would hope it wasn't the only time in her life that someone had ever asked how she was doing, but... You know, it's pretty, pretty interesting. And so I thought that was weird that that guy, it just shows how crazy this guy is that he would try to make up a fake story about the stories I tell in Japan to that my Japan vlogs are about me talking about how big my dick is. What video did you watch? Oh, yeah. Also, to end this, because I don't care to do a video on him, too, I saw that Bato guy, another guy that helped uh, try to get me banned from every Discord, trying to say that I hate transgender people, blah, blah, then took all the tech I did, tried to post it as his own. That guy's now super LGBTQ as well. And then I think that Ollie guy has now changed their gender as well. Another person that used to post pictures of me after radiation laughing about it. So, yeah, they just it's like a rule that um, after you lie about me, you got to become gay, apparently. Just insane. Anyway, if you like the videos, like, subscribe, comment, share. Support the channel. I appreciate it. Thanks. The end.